No mai ki taku kōmarero tua toru e pāna ki te taiaha And welcome back to part 3 of my kōrero on the taiaha And if you missed part 1 and part 2, all good uh, You can go and catch up on those after this one But if you guys do have any pātai uh, Please make sure you watch the first two videos uh, As your answers may lie there uh, I want to take some time to give another big shout out to all of you uh, Who continue to like, uh, comment uh, and share my post Man, you fellas give me that extra boost eh uh, To continue to want to produce this type of content uh, Hei kai mā te katoa uh, Nō reira e rere ana ngā mihi kia koutou uh, Tēnā rawa atu koutou katoa uh, We'll jump straight into it eh So the taiaha, like all of our rākau uh, They were made from our native hard timbers This taiaha here uh, is carved from maire Maire very very strong rākau uh, Also rata, rata is strong as well uh, Kānuka, mānuka, ake ake Now ake ake, uh, that rākau there has a hononga to ake rautangi I talk about Akerotangi in part two. Uh, then our medium to hard timbers, uh, such as Matai and Tawa, were also used. Uh, but our softer rako, like Totara and Kauri, uh, they weren't used. They'd probably break on impact, uh, but they were good for waka, as they're more buoyant. Ne? Uh, and also, big po momahara uh, and whare nui, whare tupuna. Uh, because the bigger the project, uh, the softer the timber you'd want to use. Uh, because it will have less of a negative effect on your tinana, especially your joints uh, and your, your uhi, your chisels. Uh, but when it comes to rākau, uh, all of our weapons, maire, rata, kanuka, ake ake, uh, manuka, matai and tawa, uh, those are the rākau that I'll use. Moving on uh, to something that I should have mentioned in part one, uh, but I forgot, uh, and that's uh, that the arero should never be thrusted uh, into the ground. I did however mention that we don't throw our uh, taiaha away because they're a representation of our tupuna, tupua, ariki, atua uh, and because of that exact reason we wouldn't thrust the arero into the ground we wouldn't like to be made to lick the ground uh, so we shouldn't do that to our taiaha kapai moving on uh, to a section that's not commonly known about uh, and that's the pora so from the taurikura uh, all the way to the bottom of your awe that section there uh, in its entirety is called a pora to my knowledge uh, on the older taiaha, uh, there, uh, this section's quite long, uh, so our taurikura would be here, it'll come down to about here, a few row might be poking out, uh, but our big tuft of material uh, would be down here, so our muka, uh, dog fur, uh, row manu, they'll all be down here, uh, and that entire section from taurikura to the bottom of the awe awe uh, was called a pora, uh, and that section there uh, was used to, to wipe your hands dry, uh, of sweat uh, and of blood uh, so it looked aesthetically pleasing uh, but it also had a, a very functional and practical purpose as well <laughs> moving on to the row uh, now a cool kōrero I heard about the row uh, and how it, how it gets its name uh, I got this kōrero from my pō whakairo uh, Clive Fugu uh, he told me that the row gets its name because the taiaha was carved in a feather like form uh, and just as the feather cuts and slices through the air uh, the hope was that the taiaha uh, would be able to do uh, exactly the same so you could come in uh, with your preferred blow kapai uh, now i want to take some time uh, to debunk a few myths uh, and misconceptions about our rako uh, misconception number one uh, is that they were only used for battle for warfare for fighting for killing people man don't, don't believe that kōrero, uh, it's absolutely incorrect. Uh, our rako were, were used for more purposes than that. Uh, some taiaha were, were carved specifically for karakia and whakarite purposes, so prayer and incantation. Uh, others were carved uh, to symbolise peace, so tatau paunamu. Uh, they symbolised peace between warring tribes. Uh, also taonga pākūwha come to mind, uh, which are wedding dowries, wedding gifts. Uh, and I guess you could look at them like currency uh, in Te Rangi Kaheke's Moko manuscript uh, he talks about uh, the things that Tohunga Tāmoko would receive uh, when they when they done moko for people uh, so things like taiaha, mere paunamu, uh, kotiate, kaitaka, uh, korowai, ngā taonga, rangatira katoa, a te Māori all of those things, those were the, uh, the gifts given to the Tohunga Tāmoko uh, to do moko to do facial and body markings uh, in the days of our tupuna uh, so that's myth number one uh, debunked uh, myth number two 
as that mate tane anahe a te rākau e hiki a e hāpai kaua e paku whakapono ki te rā kōrero wahine mā don't don't believe that kōrero uh, that's absolutely false as well uh, if we look all throughout the ages uh, there's examples from the time of our atua all the way uh, to now uh, so ka kōrero wau mō hine nui te pō hine nui te pō the goddess uh, that receives uh, the dead uh, the souls of the dead uh, she's actually forever immortalized uh, as as a uh, upoko ho on many uh, patu uh, kotiate wahaike ashora uh, thrusting and stabbing weapons uh, she's the she's the figurehead or the figurine figure on the bottom uh, and he wahine even bringing it forward uh, but more i uh, think of uh, matupuna takihiku uh, he married uh, Maiku Kutara, uh, and they had five children uh, Tamatehura, Wairangi, uh, Upokoiti, Pipito, uh, Nga Kohua and it was actually Maiku Kutara uh, that taught all of their sons uh, the art of weaponry uh, Nga, Nga Mahi Katoa, uh, o Te Whare uh, and they, uh, they are known collectively as Nga Rei, uh, Maiku Kutara, so her teeth uh, and bringing it forward even more uh, just on Sunday we celebrated or we commemorated Anzac uh, and when our toa came home from overseas, uh, they were greeted uh, with porphyry all over the motu. Uh, and if you watch those old ar archival videos, uh, you'll see uh, ku kuia uh, out on the sides. And uh, they're known as manu ngangahu. Uh, and they're all holding rākau, uh, all of our types of rākau, taiaha, patu mai, uh, all of them. Uh, so that's not even there long ago. Bring it forward uh, a little bit more uh, to the time of Irirangi Siakiawa. Tohunga mau rākau i tōna wā Now, in his waka huia uh, Tū matauenga uh, He mentions that it was his kuia uh, That taught him the art uh, that This art form, this martial art form uh, Bringing it forward even more uh, Te tangata nāna tēnei uh, Taiaha i whakairo uh, Hemi te pēti uh, In his waka huia documentary uh, He talks about how his kuia was the one uh, Who taught him uh, this art form So we have examples from the time of our atua uh, all the way to uh, all the way uh, to nowadays. No reira wahi ne ma. Kaua kota we horo kuku kite hiki kite hapa yake inga raka wa o tata i tupuna. I guess the main point that I'm trying to get across in this core marero is that the taiaha uh, and all of our rako they're more than just weapons used for killing, uh, for fighting, uh, for hurting people, uh, all of those types of things. They also had a very peaceful element attached to them. Uh, and I'm reminded of a kōrero uh, and I think I'm going to leave you guys with this kōrero uh, my uncle Prao Negloin used them in the fight kōrero a few years back uh, and he's had a huge influence uh, on my upbringing uh, he's, a, he's a mentor of mine uh, and I feel like uh, this kōrero here uh, encapsulates everything that I'm uh, trying to say uh, in this entire video uh, nō reira ane uh, e mai a mai te toa kia tū uh, me mōhio hoki a kia rongi E mōhio ai te toa ki te kai tangata uh, Me mōhio hoki a ki te mana ki tangata E mōhio ai te toa ki te pō uri uri ki te pō tango tango Me mōhio hoki te toa ki te māra matanga E mōhio ai te toa ki ngā mahi a tū Me mōhio hoki a ki ngā mahi a rongo A koe nei ki au ngā mā tāpono te toa Ia ke ana, tēnā kūtō kato Ani wa, ani wa.